Okay, so this is the second video of Option C Freshwater IBGO. So this video is about river discharge and its relationship to stream flow channel characteristics and hydraulic radius. So first of all, we need to do definitions. So river discharge is the volume of water passing a given point over a set time. It can be measured in meters cubed or meters cubed per second or cumex and then Okay, and it's also calculated by cross-section of the river at a certain point times the velocity at a certain point um, of the, like, water moving past that point. Okay, and then we have stream flow, which is water in the river, and that can either be laminar, which is straight, so it flows, like, straight, or turbulent, which can be eddying, horizontal or vertical, or whirlpool, so kind of like basically any flow that isn't straight so like cur it can be like a whirlpool or it can be like riffles and pools and things like that okay and then wetted perimeter is where the water has contact with the bed and bank so that's measured as the length cross-sectional area is the width times the depth of the river and then finally hydraulic radius is the percentage of water touching the bed and bank of a river and it's a measure of efficiency it's calculated by cross-sectional area over a wetted perimeter um yes okay i'm gonna also show a diagram to make this more clear okay so this is kind of a better ex um, representation so basically this is the wetted perimeter because this is the like water that touches the banks of the banks in the bed of the river um so then when you calculate hydraulic radius it would be the cross-sectional area so the width times the depth so that whole area over the wetted perimeter okay and now we're gonna see the relationships so typically river discharge will be larger if there's more laminar flow a lower red wetted perimeter larger cross-sectional area and more efficiency in terms of hydraulic radius and if we look at the bradshaw model here which is a model showing like the expected river characteristics um down upstream and downstream have of course there are many exceptions to this model um as it doesn't really take into account human interference and kind of other factors that might affect it this showed us, shows us that as you move downstream, the discharge increases and the channel bed becomes less rough. So that would possibly mean that the wetted perimeter would actually decrease because there's kind of less rocks around the bed. Like for example here, if you were kind of more upstream, it would tend to be a more like jagged um, riverbed and banks because of like rocks that like the load tends to be um, of larger size so then you would maybe have a larger wetted perimeter because of that extra like length um, whereas when you move downstream it gets less rough so it's more likely to maybe be a lower wet wetted perimeter and also a larger cross-sectional area because there's kind of more space here as there's less large load um, and then that would be in a larger hydraulic radius so the river becomes more efficient or tends to become more efficient as you move downstream.